Do you think it's going to go well with the Jews in the United States or anywhere else in the world? When they're trying to pass even Sharia law in the United States? I mean, come on, wake up! You know, people need to wake up what's going on. My brothers in Israel, you need to wake up. Erev Tov Chavrim, this is Stephen ben Danun with Israel Live and needed to bring you up to date. Uh, normally our regular scheduled program begins Mondays through Thursdays, uh, but with some inf developing information out of Ukraine, I felt it uh, pertinent that I come to you and share with you some information uh, about this particular unrest that's going on. Uh, some behind the scene things that you may not be aware of. and. Uh, I just have to uh, thank one of our, our viewers that actually sent this information in. I will not call her name uh, because of the sensitivity of this information. And I think it's better for her own safety. But I'd just like to say God bless you for sharing this information with us here. Uh, an article here that was posted on, um, uh, it's called Press Investigative Reports, uh, Catholic Church declared and waged war against Ukraine for daring to exit the EU. Uh, let me just kind of bring you up the speed on some things though so that you're aware of these facts before we get into this. Uh, one thing, um, let's go back a little bit in the history just so you can see what the EU, who, what the EU really is, how it got started, when it got started, and its establishment. Now, this was an article written by Paul W. Kincaid from the CI Press Corps. He's a CI Press Corps uh, editor on uh, February 23rd, 2014 is when he wrote this. The EU was created as, as a result of the uh, uh, Reich's Concordant, it's hard for me to say that, Reich Concord, Concordant uh, Treaty Alliance between the Vatican, the Holy See, and Adolf Hitler. The Concordant formed the Vatican Third Reich, Third Holy Roman Empire. The treaty alliance between the Holy See, the Vatican, and Adolf Hitler was signed during Germany's transition into Nazi Germany on July 20th, 1933. Um, interesting. It was signed by the Vatican Secretary of State uh, Eugenio uh, Pasili, who very soon thereafter became Pope Pius XII. Fascinating facts there. On behalf of Pope Pius uh, XI and Vice Chancellor Franz von Papen, and President Paul von Hindenburg on behalf of Adolf Hitler. The framework for the Vatican EU was first made public in Germany on the 22nd of June 1940 as the European Economic Community, the EEC. Uh, the first EEC conference was held at Berlin University, a Catholic university, by the way, renamed uh, the Humboldt University of Berlin in 1942 after the fall of the Vatican's Third Reich. Third Holy Roman Empire, the Holy See changed the EEC ideology from Nazism to communist European community in 1946. Uh, the community, communist EEC wasn't officially formed until the signing of the Vatican's Treaty of Rome. Uh, uh, this treaty was established in the European Economic Community of 1957. However, it, it didn't enter into force until 1993. With the signing of the uh, Maastricht Treaty, uh, at which time the range of policies the three European communities, including the EC, were collectively made the, uh, to constitute the first of the three pillars of the European Union. The EC existed in this form until it was uh, abolished by the 2009 Treaty of Lisbon, which merged the EU's uh, former pillars and provided that the EU would replace and succeed the, uh, the European community, the EC that is. That's how the European Union got started. Now, another ironic thing is that uh, when this was signed, uh, when this was signed the, the, for the European Union, this was signed in front of a monstrosity statue of Pope, get this, Pope Innocent X. <laughs> Amazing uh, how that took place there. Anyway, I wanted to share that news there with you, just kind of give you a little bit of background about the EU, because what's happening, this protest over in the Ukraine, is all a, a, a result of the Vatican's anger that, um, that the Ukrainian president 
was actually wanting to back out of some ties that were going on uh, with the European Union. Now they had not officially uh, become part of the European Union, but they were wanting to back out of that. And uh, let me just share a little bit of this information with you here. The EU is seeking an increasingly close relationship with Ukraine that goes beyond mere bilateral cooperation encompassing gradual progress towards political association and economic integration. Now this is uh, from the European Union External Action. Uh, it is a, 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 an online uh, news source here. Uh, and they say here, Ukraine is a priority partner country within the European Neighborhood Policy, the ENP, and the Eastern Partnership, the Partnership and Cooperation Agreement, uh, which entered into force in 1998, uh, provides a comprehensive framework for the cooperation between the EU and the Ukraine in all the key areas of reform, including a deep comprehensive free trade area. Uh, was negotiated in 2007 uh, through 2011 and initiated in 2012 on the 10th of December 2012. The EU F uh, Foreign Affairs Council adopted the Council uh, Consultions uh, on Ukraine. These affirmed the EU's commitment to signing the agreement, including the DCFTA, as soon as Ukraine takes d determined action and makes tangible progress towards achieving the benchmark set out in the conclusions. Um, on the 21st of November, however, of 2013, the cabinet ministers of the Ukraine took a des decision to suspend preparations to sign the association uh, agreement. The EU takes note to the unprecedented public support in Ukraine for political association and economic integration with the EU and remains ready to sign an association agreement on the basis of determined action and tangible progress on the EU's benchmarks to, to this end. Important progress has already been achieved. Now, what's ironic about all this is that Russia is being blamed as the aggressor in this case for invading Ukraine to protect its citizens. Uh, but in reality, the president who was democratically elected in Ukraine wanted to back out of the, uh, this agreement with the EU. And it was a, an extreme offense of Pope Francis uh, for him to do so. And so this has really become a major issue. Uh, so I'd like to enlighten you a little bit on some more information as to how this all got started and, and so therefore we go back to press investigative reports and their article here uh, says on November 21st 2013 Ukraine President Viktor Yakovich announced that his majority elected Ukrainian government was abandoning agreement that would strengthen ties with the Catholic Church founded European Union <laughs> Interested, of course, founded by Pope Pius XII in 1942 as the European Economic, Economic Community, which I've already explained that to you, the ECC. It took the Catholic Church over 60 years to form the Vatican-occupied Europe, the EU. The Catholic Church wasn't about to let one of its occupied European states to leave uh, the Vatican Fourth Reich and ally itself with an arch enemy of the Catholic Church, which is the Soviet Union. Um, and uh, the Soviet Union helped Canada, the United States, and Great Britain defeat the Catholic Church German Third Reich and prevented the Vatican from regrouping under a Fourth Reich by occupying East Germany for 45 years. The Catholic Church ordered members of the Sovereign Order of Malta and the Ukrainian Orthodox Greek Catholic Church, the UOGCC, um, that was established in 2009 the same year as the constitutional basis of the Catholic uh, Church's EU, the Treaty of the, uh, Lisbon came into force, and that's when it was signed right there uh, in front of that, the statue I was telling you about, Pope Pius, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Pope Innocent X, uh, he certainly is an innocent, that's for sure, uh, by the Catholic Church to take to the streets and to defend the European Union economic interests of the Catholic Church. Uh, of, the, excuse me, of the Catholic Church Pope. Members of the Ukrainian Orthodox Greek Catholic Church profess the Catholic faith, including the prima, uh, primacy of the Roman Pontiff, Petros Romanos, George Mario Bergoglio, I get that name right eventually, 
and disassociated themselves from contem uh, contemporary heresies which destroyed both Eastern and the Western Church. The violent civil war in Ukraine was started by the Catholic Church and newly installed anti-pope, a false claimant of the Holy See in opposition to a living canonically elected pontiff, Pope Benedict the, the, uh, XVI. Francis, who declared war against the democratically elected Ukrainian government and the peoples of Ukraine for daring to exit the Catholic Church-occupied European Union, members of the Sovereign Order of Malta were called upon by the Vatican to honor their oath to the Catholic Church and to the Pope and wage war against the people and the government of Ukraine. And you guys, uh, if you listen to uh, our Israel Returns uh, channel there on YouTube, Stephen Bendenu, you know what we, we, we've shared with you, uh, the Jesuit oath, and that is, no matter what it is, regardless of rank, there to annihilate all heretics. Uh, and by the way, the majority of the Ukrainians are Catholic, uh, and so therefore they came out in force. On November 30th, 2013, pro-Catholic Church EU supporters attempt to overthrow the Ukrainian government through violent uh, super, uh, uh, subversion. On su uh, Sunday, December the 1st, 2013, Catholic Parishioners are urged to support the Catholic Church by protesting against the anti-Catholic EU-Ukraine government. 300,000 Catholics take to the streets in downtown um, Kyiv, uh, Kyiv, Ukraine, on the, on the Catholic Church Sun God Sol Evictus Day of Worship. Isn't that interesting? They like picking their days, don't they? Um, also, we have in, um, on uh, uh, December the 9th, uh, Pro-Catholic EU terrorists armed with Im Im improvised weapons taken occupied City Hall in Kiev, Ukraine. On December 17, 2013, Russia President Vladimir Putin announces that Moscow will buy 15 billion worth of Ukrainian government bonds and allow for a sharp drop in the price of Ukraine's pay for Russian natural uh, gas. This announcement infuriates the Catholic Church Pope as uh, as Catholic Church oil and gas interests in the region would suffer a major loss with the Ukraine friendly energy deal. Uh, kind of get the idea of why the Ukrainian president wanted to back out of this deal, see. Uh, two protesters die after, this is on January 22nd, 2014, uh, two protesters die uh, after being hit by Catholic Church terrorist sniper and a third after fall during a confrontation between police and demonstrators manning barricades. The first shots and casualties of the Catholic Church war against Ukraine. On the 28th of January, 2014, the Prime Minister is forced to resign and, and Parliament is forced under du, uh, duress to repeal the new anti-protest laws that, that set off the Catholic Church, ordered deadly violence and attacks against the Ukraine government and people a week earlier. Both are imposed by the Catholic Church with the Internet to seize control of the elected government of the Ukrainian people. Uh, I mean, it just it just gets crazier and crazier by the, by, by the days as days were unfolding. Um, let's move ahead a little bit. Let's jump up to February 18th of 2014. Skipping some of these, you can read them later yourself. Armed Catholic Church terrorists attacked Ukraine police, leaving at least 26 people, including 10 police officers, dead and hundreds injured. The violence began when Catholic Church terrorists attacked police lines and set fires outside Parliament after Parliament stalls on taking up a Catholic Church imposed constitutional reform to limit uh, uh, presidential powers. Oh my gosh. On February 20th, 2014, hours after a truce, truce is announced, armed Catholic Church terrorists attacked protesters and police in Independence Square, Kiev, Ukraine, with numerous casualties. On the 22nd of February, 2014, armed Catholic Church terrorists seized control of the capital of Kiev by force, seizing the president's office and forces the anti-EU Ukraine government at gunpoint to vote to remove democratically elected President Viktor Yukonovich and hold new elections under the EU uh, mediation. The Catholic Church forces the Ukrainian government under duress and at gunpoint to appoint Olkinsender uh, uh, Turkinov as interim president at gunpoint. So much for democracy, right? 88 people have been killed since uh, February the 18th and the Catholic Church provoked civil war in Ukraine, murdered by the Catholic Church because a trade deal with the Catholic Church controlled EU, occupied Europe, was spurned in favor of a closer ties with Russia. Now do you kind of wonder why then Obama 
is brave enough to confront Vladimir Putin? That's because the United States is under Vatican control as well. That's why I was told rather nicely, keep my mouth shut about the Vatican. You're causing problems. Well, this is also why the door is open for all these Catholic people that believe certainly that replacement theology is the right way to go. Well, that's why we have anti-Semitism in Ukraine as well. And that's why the Jews are having to flee as well in that, in, that, in that regards as well. The point being here, again, we see prophetic the prophetic landscape being shaped as the Vatican, who the Pope, uh, um, Pope Francis is pressing for that political power around the world. As his flag states, both temporal and spiritual power is what he is going for. He is wanting world domination. We're living in a serious hour, friends. I trust that we will really prayerfully seek the Lord in this closing hour of our world's history. Make ready. Pray like you've never prayed before. It's certainly an hour we should. Later, you can join us over at Stephen uh, well, that's me. <laughs> you can join us there at our, at our uh, YouTube channel. We'll be doing a teaching tonight, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you as well. Good night.